Hi guys, I'm back. It's been so long. <laughs> I kind of left you all hanging. I've had so many people reach out to me and say, Amber, are you okay? What's going on? Where have you been? Well, I just needed a little break from uh, podcasting. And I think my last episode was at some point, it was at some point in December between the middle of the month and Christmas because I did just a regular podcast episode and then I've just had so many things going on, which maybe I'll decide to talk about at the end of the episode. Um, but I just have so much knitting to talk about. So I don't want to just talk about life updates. Maybe I'll do that at the end if I haven't talked your ear off. <laughs> um, you're probably going to hear my one dog, we are probably going to hear Mitty snoring in the background because she's literally laying right behind the camera on the floor napping. And I personally myself find her snoring and breathing very <laughs> relaxing. It's kind of like a cat's purring, you know, I don't know. Maybe if you're not an animal person, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about, but I don't want to disturb her. And this is where I film because this is my bedroom and you know, I have, um, my whole family basically is home today, and so it's not feasible for me to film out in any other living space. So we're going to just go with the background ambiance of Mitty breathing and snoring at times. So as I said, I have so much I want to talk about because I have been doing a lot of knitting, and I have a crochet project that I finished, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about things that I want to begin working on once I wrap up a couple of projects that I'm currently working on. So I think we should probably just dive right in so that this doesn't become a truly like really, really long podcast. Um, although I know some of you don't care <laughs> if it is a long podcast, but uh, let's just get started. So first thing I want to talk about are my finished objects. I do want to say out front, this is not a hand knit sweater. This is a secondhand sweater, or this is a sweater I purchased secondhand from, it was like from Goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul's, one of those thrifting, thrifty stores that we have in our area. And I love it. It's long. So it like, I, I t truly don't really wear leggings much except to bed or when I'm working out, but I have been wearing leggings more and part of that is due to my life update. So um, I'm just, I'm wearing a cardiac monitor for 30 days. And so I have these leggings with uh, pockets that just, it tucks, the, the monitor actually tucks down in. So I have been um, wearing leggings. So this sweater, I got this recently because it like covers my bum which is nice. And it's really roomy. It's like <laughs> super roomy and, um, cozy. Yeah, it's very cozy and very warm. And I think it's because of the turtleneck. I don't know. So I think I showed you that. I know I showed you this in my last episode. And, um, this is my yarn candy scarf, which is a pattern by Judy of the autumn acorn. And I finished this. I pretty much flew through this because crocheting is so much faster. In my opinion, I forgot to write down what hook size I used, but whatever hook size is called for in the pattern is what I used. And I've already filed that pattern away. And I, so I don't have that information for you, but, um, yeah, just, just so you know that I used whatever hook Judy called for in her pattern. So this pattern is written for, I think it's written for DK weight yarn and it's written to use like, she released this in December. So it was, I think her intention was for like people to use up their, uh, advent minis. If they had a DK weight advent calendar, all I did to, um, adjust for that is I just held fingering weight double. So I went through, I, sh I think I showed you guys my system of how I went in December. I went through crinkle. I organized all of my mini skeins into color families. So like this is the purple one. And then I did pinks, blues, greens, yellows, reds, neutrals, and so forth. Okay. So that I highly suggest doing that. And then I just have them all in this big tote bag. And then I can just carry that tote bag around with me when I'm working on a mini, on a mini project, not a mini project, a project that uses mini skeins, a scrappy project. So, um, 
yeah, this was fun. I had so much fun and I hadn't crocheted for a long time either. So it went by so quickly, but let me unfold it completely and you can see, I mean, it's a scarf. It's, um, you've got the angle on this end and then it, you know, it does that on the other end and then it has some bobbles. It has different texture in it. Um, where are the bobbles? So the bobbles, I haven't done bobbles for a long time, but here we go. I had a little bit of trouble with the bobbles sticking out and I, I tried a couple of different things for that, but basically what I ended up doing was something that one of you had suggested. And I think, I think what I did, I didn't take notes while I was crocheting this pattern. Can you tell? Um, I pulled the stitch before no, I did a half double. So the bobbles are done with double crochets. So I did a half double crochet, the stitch before the bobble and the stitch after the bobble. So that tightened it up around the bobble so that the bobble would pop out. If you are a crocheter, then that probably makes sense. If not, it may not, but this was fun to do. And I think that it would be fine if you're new. It would definitely be fine if you're a new, if you're new to crocheting, because it's, it's very easy pattern. Um, even as a first, I feel like, well, maybe not as a very, very first crochet project, but it's nice and drapey because it's all fingering weight yarn held double. It's all different indie dyed fingering weight yarn that I used. Uh, there's no commercially dyed yarn in here. And it, again, just, just kind of did the color changes as I went. Some are longer than others. As you can see, this pink portion is really long. This green isn't. I was just very random with that and just had fun. It was a very mindless it was just a good project for December because as a lot of you know, I was very sick. Um, so I needed something that I didn't really have to think hard about. Okay, moving on. We have my other scrappy project that I have showed you previously. And this was another December knitting project. Again, another easy one, which was good because again, was sick for literally six weeks and did not have mental capacity to do complicated things. So um, this is my Euphorbia shawl by Amba O'Brien. I am going to insert, let me scooch over so I can insert some video here because this thing is huge. So I filmed a little bit this morning to show you guys it like stretching it all out and everything because it is such a, a huge shawl. Part of that is just that's a big shawl and part of it is also that I accidentally increased too much. <laughs> and did not realize it until I started to do the decreases. And then I was like, wait a second, something's not working or something. It's not that it didn't work, but my numbers weren't, my stitch counts weren't matching up with what she had written in the pattern. And I was like, Hmm. Okay. So this was written. I think the pattern is written for fingering weight yarn. I did fingering weight plus mohair. So that's another reason mine is bigger right there because it's based, essentially it's a DK weight yarn. So you cast on on one, one end and you increase until you get to a certain number of stitches and then you do the middle panel uh, until a certain length and then you decrease to another point, which was fantastic because at no point was I knitting hundreds of stitches at a time. Do you know what I mean? Well, I think the most stitches I was supposed to have was 120, but I had a little bit more than that because I increased too much. So it's just, it just felt nice. Sometimes in shawls, when you're knitting shawls, it's hard because you're like, have this massive amount of stitches on your needles and you just kind of get, especially if it's at the end of the shawl. Um, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I think my dog is dreaming that she's like running because her little paws are going like this. Um, there they go. Anyway, um, what was I saying? I'm so distracted by cute animals. Um, it doesn't matter what I'm saying. Okay. So let's, this is so, it's so beautiful. So I, I had, um, Jennifer from, from Brazos Fiberworks had sent me a, as a gift, she had sent me a, um, hold on one second. Okay. I'm back. My mom called. I film on my phone, so I needed to take that call from her. Um, anyway, I, uh, again, I forget what I was saying, but <laughs> take me as I am guys. Take me as I am. Okay. So, um, yes, this was so, oh, oh, Brazos, Brazos 
Fiberworks. Yes, so she sent me a full advent kit. So a 24-day advent kit as a gift, which was so incredibly sweet of her. And I had so much fun opening that up. And it was such a, just like a joy to open that up, especially since I was just feeling so blah and just so sick and just having that little treat every day during December. But, um, so I started out this shawl using just her skeins from her kit. So I think through this one right here. And I did them in the order that she had them in the kit. And then I decided I wanted to have more control over my color management. So I started then pulling in from just my mini skeins that I had available. So I just started doing my own color management using her minis um, in the other parts of the shawl, but not making this exclusively with her advent kit. And um, I, what I ended up doing is kind of like pinks here because that's how her kit started out. It was lots of like pinks, a little bit of peach and a little bit of purple. And then I went into greens and then I did a little bit of purplish colors and then I went into blues and then I went into like peachy, pinky, purple and kind of like wrapped it up on the ends so they were somewhat similar as you can see. Oops, this thing is massive. <laughs> it's really massive. Um, so I, I really like this. It's going to be a super warm, humongous shawl. I have been in the mood to knit shawls. I like, I go in these phases, I think, because all summer and fall, I just wanted to knit sweaters. That was my thing. I just want to knit sweaters. I didn't really feel like knitting much of anything else but sweaters. Now I'm just wanting to knit shawls and I do wear shawls in the winter. I mostly wear them outside of my home. So when I go out places, I'll throw them on with my coat. I don't wear them as much inside. I'm not one that I just don't naturally do this when I'm at home, like throw it. Although I could, this would be a great one to do that because it's literally, it would not fall off my shoulders because it's so big. I have so much extra fabric. Actually, that looks really nice. That looks really nice. Oh, this is cozy. Maybe I'll just leave it here. <laughs> um, but yes, I really enjoyed this. Let me see if there's any. Oh, okay. So what I did is this was designed to use 25 different colors and I used 28. And that is because I got just, I think I just got lost in the enjoyment of the process of knitting it that I increased too many sections. So I ended up needing a longer decrease section. So I ended up flipping through more colors. And honestly, this shawl is designed that you could do that. You don't, you, I pretty much, she told you how many rows of each color to do. And I kind of followed that. I did follow that in the beginning, but by the time I got to the middle, I was just kind of doing my own thing and it still worked out fine because you're just increasing knitting straight for a while and then decreasing. It's kind of like the Sophie scarf for those of you who have knit that or the Sophie shawl. It's very um, flexible in adapting it to whatever length or width you want. So, oh, it's so pretty. I just love looking at it like this. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a favorite of mine. Um, and I am a big fan of fingering weight and mohair. I just love the fuzziness of mohair. I think it just softens the yarn so much. And then it also is just so comfy. Sometimes it's a little too warm for me, but it's just so cozy. It doesn't bother me at all. I know some people have a hard time with like mohair. It, it bothers their skin. It irritates them, but I don't have that problem at all. I found it, find it extremely soft and I've tried several different types of mohair. So I think I'm just lucky in that way and that I can, I'm quite tolerable to mohair. Um, I do, do also like the alpaca, um, is it alpaca and silk? I've, I've used that. And I, in fact, that is what I was going to use. I have a skein of it here. It's just, it's got a lot more, I think it's probably a thicker diameter and it's got a lot more fuzz to it. And I decided not to use this because I didn't want to swallow up the color too, too much. I just kind of wanted to soften the colors and um, just make it a softer looking look, <laughs> essentially. 
Okay. Oh, another thing. If you guys knit this pattern, I just want to, and I talked about this a bit in the past, but I just want to say there, it has an I cord edge the whole way along. And when I first cast it on, I was pulling my I cord edge, I think pretty tight. And it's if here, I'll hold it like this so you can see what I'm, well, I did block this. So you're not, it's not as bad, but do you see how it's like falling forward there because yes okay really tight here lots of fabric here so it kind of like drapes down um I noticed that at around this point and so I started to loosely do my I cord edge but I don't think it looks loose it still looks nice and neat yeah but I was just more I was just more conscious of how tight I was pulling the stitches on the end when I was doing the eye cord edging and I had, I didn't have that problem then in the rest, even on the other side, look, you can see there's no, it's just completely flat. There's no extra fabric that because it doesn't, it's not that there's extra fabric. It just looks, it's just like drooping because it's so tight along the edge. So keep that in mind. I know there is a way to um, add extra stitches in along that when you're doing an eye cord edging. I didn't bother to look up how to do that. I just was more conscious of how tight I held those stitches when I was actually knitting them. Okay. I think that's all I want to say about this. Um, I use size six needles, which I think is what the pattern called for, but maybe not. Maybe I went up. I might've gone up a needle size because I did the double, the fingering and the mohair. I don't think it calls for fingering and mohair. I think it just calls for fingering. But again, I've already, this has been finished for so long that I've already have that pattern filed away. Okay, so moving on, I have a little headband that I made Lily, my daughter. Where did it go? There it is. So I, um, she does not wear hats. She has very thick, very voluminous, naturally curly hair, and she doesn't like to wear hats because she, it just feels so tight because she has so much hair and then also it like smushes her curls. So she prefers to wear headbands in the winter. So I made her another headband. I had made her one last year that was like a, well, actually I had made it for myself and then she kind of just took it, but that's okay. I don't mind when she takes my stuff because I like that she likes it. Um, so this is just like one of those twist patterns for a headband and it is called the Frida and it is a free pattern by Atelier Amelie. And uh, I will link everything down below for, so you guys can like link it to Ravelry and such. But um, this is just basically like double stockinette stitching, double knitting, I guess you could call it that. I know there's several different ways to do double knitting, but you're basically knitting a stitch and then slipping a stitch the whole way across, like back and forth. And then you bind off at the end and you have this long strip of knitted fabric and then you fold that fold both ends in half tuck them into each other and then you stitch them shut and it gives that beautiful looking fold right there so this is so beautiful I love lightly speckled yarns that are on a like a creamy colored base it actually is a, a bit more peachy looking in real life that's not coming across the camera I don't think but um oh I just I love this and I actually have a lot of this yarn left. So let me show you this yarn because this yarn was sent to me as a gift. I had never heard of this, this yarn company before. I know nothing about them, so I don't know if this person is still dying, but it's cozy color works. And, um, this is 550 yards of fingering weight yarn in Jersey peach. I'm so, I have a plan for this. I'm going to talk about it in a little bit. And I had some silk mohair left over from this Euphorbia shawl. So I just held these two double. And I think the pattern actually calls for that, for, for a fingering weight and a mohair held double. But if you don't like mohair, you could just hold two fingering weights together and it would be perfectly fine. But the mohair does give a nice cozy, uh, feel and an extra layer of warmth to it. So yeah, I don't have anything else to say other than if you're looking for an easy, quick, oh, so yes, I did want to say, um, this kind of ties in with, um, something I'm going to talk about a little bit more here in, a, at the end, but I wanted to talk about the, uh, let me see here. Hold on a second. I've got to find 
what I'm calling that. So I had talked about doing like a handmade gift knit along the entire month, the entire year of 2024, just doing, um, knitting one gift knit a month. And, um, this is my first entry into that. Now the intention was to have at the end of the 12 months have like, you know, gifts for Christmas, but I'm including this because I'm actually probably going to knit another one of these as a Christmas gift this month. And uh, I think this would be, if you guys are looking for a easy, quick, versatile gift to gift to someone in, at Christmas, I'm going to include this in that hashtag on Instagram. And the hashtag name is handmade gift mel make along 2024. I'll put it down below and, and on the screen. So if you guys want to participate in that, just on your Instagram posts. If you take a picture of what you're making, it doesn't even have to be finished. Just take a picture and use the hashtag and then we can all kind of check each other out. The whole idea is to be inspired by what everybody else is knitting and to also maybe get some ideas for some good gift knits. So yeah, that's, I'm going to, this is going to be my very first entry for that. I may even do more than one a month, but since this technically isn't a Christmas gift, I feel like I do need to do another one, but I'm not going to hold myself to certain standards like that, especially since today is January 24th. So I only have what, like a week left in the month. <laughs> I may not get to that. Um, okay. So anyway, really love doing that. Really nice, easy, mindless. If you don't want to, if you want some mindless knitting, but you don't want to knit on a sock, that would be a good substitute. Okay. Let's get on. Let's move on to my whips. And I want to show you a pair of socks that I'm knitting as a gift for someone. So this, I don't know if I'll finish these. I may finish these in time to include these in my, as my January gift. But, um, this is Drops Fable yarn, Drops Fable prints. Yes. Color 921. And on the label, it does not tell me the name of that colorway. It just has the number but it's something like unicorn, unicorn party or something like that, which actually I feel like is quite fitting with this color. It's, it's enough fun. It's like gray blues and some neutrals and some bright colors. I just need to, um, stitch the toe shut and then I've already started the second one and I've got this much done on that one. I think I mentioned this before, but I bought a bunch of Drops Fable back last year when they were having a big sell on it through Wool Warehouse. And I knit, well, the first pair of socks I knit with it, I was not crazy about the yarn. I felt like it was really splitty, but this is not like that at all. It's not splitty at all. So maybe it's just dependent on the colorway you get, or maybe it was just a bad batch that, I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, those are the socks I'm knitting and those are a gift for somebody. Okay. Oh, I'm just having so much fun being back with you guys and talking about my knitting. <laughs> I was feeling, I'm going to be honest, I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed by it because it's been so long and I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be rusty. But yeah, it's okay. You guys are lovely and so kind and <laughs> you know how I am if you've been around here for a while. Okay. I think I need to take this off because I'm actually starting to sweat. <laughs> So we're going to take this off. Plus I have, um, my Gloam card again that I want to show you and I have not done much to it other than I joined the body pieces or I'm sorry. I, I joined the shoulders. I still need to stitch the sides up and, um, I have it marked on both sides with just some stitch markers so that it's, I'm going to actually do this today, probably once I'm done filming, but here it is. And, um, I think the best way for me to do it is probably just when I, I'm going to just include a little clip here of me having it on so far. And, um, I ended up doing a mattress stitch, but I'm not, I'm not crazy about, I mean, I think I would have rather liked to see the detail of the mattress stitch on the outside rather than the inside. So I think though, once I block this out, it'll look better. I thought about ripping it out and then I'm just not that much of a perfectionist when it comes with my knitting. Um, I'll block that. It'll flatten that down a bit and it'll be fine. I mean, I don't know. It'll be fine. It will be fine. 
I'm not, I'm not, this is very toothy yarn. And I just was like, if I try to unpick that, I might end up messing up the, like, I just, yeah, it's okay. It's all right. So, but I am going to use the mattress stitch down here for sure to seam up these sides as well. And, um, I really like this. This has been a slow going project. I started this back in October and I know that because we were at we were in Emerald Isle, North Carolina on vacation when I started this. And um, so you can see what happened was I knitted the panels because it's knitting panels and then it's ste seamed together and then you pick up the sleeves and knit them. I'm pretty sure in the round, although I haven't <laughs> looked at that yet. That's my next step after I mattress stitch the sides. But I just kind of got, anytime I have to do something like seaming or maybe even blocking to move on to the next part of a project that always slows me down. It's like this mental block where I'm like, eh, I don't really feel like doing that. So I'm not going to do that right now. And then I just keep putting it off. So two nights ago, I finally sat down and I seamed the shoulder shut and I'm going to do the sides today. And, um, then I'll pick up the stitches for one of the arms because I think then it's just going to fly after that because I'm, if I remember correctly, I don't know that there's any texture on the sleeves. No, there's not. If you look at this diagram, I can show you this. I have almost all of it done besides, I have the hardest parts done. I mean, I still have to do the ribbing on the neck and I still need to do the sleeves, but look how little these sleeves are because this is a drop shoulder. That's why it's like, looks so big because it's, it's meant, this is meant to like hang down and then you just have like little stockinette sleeves there. But, um, yeah, so that's, that'll be nice to get this done. It's, and I have another project that I'm not even going to talk about today, maybe next episode that I need to, it's a sweater. I need to rip the arms, the arm back on it and start over. Cause I'm not happy with it. I'm not even going to talk about it, but, um, uh, yeah. And oh, by the way, this is, this pattern is the Gloam by Caitlin Hunter. And this yarn is Juniper Moon Farm in the Patagonia, which is an organic, organic something. Organic Merino. Yeah. So it's a very lovely yarn. Very lovely. I would definitely knit with that yarn again. So that's what I have on that. Wish me luck. No, I don't need luck. I just need some discipline and perseverance <laughs> to do that seeming. Okay. My last whip, I think it's my last whip that I'm going to talk about today. Um, like my last active whip is my, is part of the, is the Jimmy Beans uh, wool. Hold on. I'm getting another call. This is what happens when you film on your phone. <laughs> So it's the blanket club that I'm doing for and with Jimmy Beans Wool. Okay, so I talked about this two times back in December, but basically for those of you that haven't heard this yet, this is kind of like a paid promotion. It is definitely a paid promotion. Jimmy Beans Wool reached out to me. It was like, oh yes, I love this. This is what I've been waiting for as a podcaster, you know, because I get so, I've gotten so many collaboration emails, but it's always for like, stuff that doesn't apply to what I do here. Like I wear shoes, uh, roses that are preserved in something. So they last forever jewelry. Like it's always been stuff like that. And I've never been able to really justify promoting something like that in my video. Cause it just didn't feel true to what I'm doing here. So when Jimmy beans will reach out and ask me if I would like to kind of represent their, um, blanket club and do like a bit of, it's basically in an advertisement, you know, I'm being completely honest with you guys, um, for them on my podcast, I was like, well, yes, I really did not have to think twice about that because that completely goes around, goes along with what I'm doing here. It's a knitting project. It is yarn. It, I have a, a knitting and yarn podcast. So I jumped at the chance. I'm so very grateful to them for, um, asking me to be included in this. So for those of you who are not aware, Jimmy, um, Jimmy Beans Wool is a yarn um, distributor and they're based out of Utah and um, they have a, 
just really good ethics and they're a, a small company. It's a woman owned company. It's just, you know, I, I read up on them and I was just very impressed with everything that I read about. And then after I talked about it, there were multiple people that multiple viewers that reached out and said, Oh, we love Jimmy beans. Wool. they're a great company, great customer service. So, um, yeah, I was super excited to do this. So this club that I'm participating in is the blanket club and we are knitting the wildflower blanket. This club is a monthly subscription club, so you can pay monthly or you can pay all up front and you're covered for the entire year. And basically what, what happens is it's kind of like a mystery knit along, but not really because you can see a picture of the blanket, which I will flash some pictures up here as I'm talking. Like you see what it's going to look like in the end. You just don't have access to the patterns or the yarn until the month of. And I think the kits all ship out like mid month the middle of each month and then you get them you knit your squares for that month and then the next month you get another one and you can pay per month or you can pay all up front as I already said they actually sent me my kit for free they let me pick the theme the color theme which there were two different color themes one is the um, romantic colorways which I will put up here and the other color theme is the playful theme and also I will put that up here and I have to say, both are beautiful, and I had a hard time picking, but I ended up going with the Romantic, and I absolutely love it. Um, I have all of that yarn in this. It's more of a moody, moody colorway. Um, I have it all in that basket there. That is my Blanket Club basket, where I'm keeping all the yarn for this project. And um, this pattern is written by Lena Scaverson. And it is a patchwork style and so you're knitting squares different squares each month now I'm saying squares plural because for this month I knit four squares total but two of them were very tiny and literally were just so fast like so fast I should have timed myself I didn't I literally sat down and had them done in no time and then the other two were larger but um, I just wanted to, I'm going to show you those. I just wanted to tell you a bit about the club. They're using, it's Madeline Tosh yarn. It's a special blend that they're doing just for their blanket club. And it's the, like their blanket blend. But oh, it's so, this is like my favorite skein, I think. I don't know. They're all beautiful. They are. But I just love, I, I'm a speckly kind of girl. And this is very speckly. But, you know, like. Just so beautiful. Anyway, I showed the yarn in the last episode. Um, but oh, another thing you do if you're not a knitter, you can get the crocheted version. And if you are allergic to wool, they have an allergy friendly version as well, which is Barocco something. It's some Barocco yarn that does not have wool in it. So if you have wool allergies, then you can Barocco Comfort. That's what it's called. Yes. Okay. I, um, anyway, so let me show you my blocks for January. I know that I've had multiple people reach out and say, I'm doing this too. So it's kind of fun. We can do this together. If you don't, if you haven't knitted yours yet, and for some reason you don't want to see what they're going to look like, then just look away. That's my warning to you, but it's not like a mystery knit along. So I'm, I'm going to show them anyway. Um, so the first square Yes, this was the first one. So this was the first square that I knit and I've already blocked these. And this colorway is cold drip. And I actually, I'll show you what I have left of this. I have this much left, which it said to save it because I will need it again in the future at some point. So I just stuck it in its little label and stuck it back in the basket. Okay, so square number one, all blocked. Just haven't woven the ends in yet. And then this is square number two. So it's like this lattice work pattern. I like this yarn because it's kind of, it's like heathered. Can you see that? It's like light and dark. And then my two little squares are still on the needle because I need to move them over to stitch markers, like long stitch markers or some scrap yarn because you actually don't bind these two off. So I'm going to obviously be doing something with these later, but see how little they are. That was moss stitch. So it was like so fast, so fast to make those. Um, this is so fun. I, like these big squares weren't 
they didn't take long either. It's essentially like knitting a washcloth. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm actually really looking forward to doing February's because it's just nice. It's like, it's a long-term project, but because it's a monthly thing and you don't get access to the pattern until that month or to the yarn, I, I think that helps me like not feel like I need to totally dive in and just conquer this big project. It's just like nicely put into small packages that you <laughs> open that month and you, and you do it. So it just feels like if you, if you stay on top of it at the end, and it's not hard to stay on top of because it's not like a huge overwhelming thing to do every month. By the end of the month, you're going to have a blanket or by the end of the year, you're going to have a blanket. So, um, yeah, I just, I really like this because sometimes blankets can be overwhelming and I am a big fan of patchwork and like scrappier looking projects. So that is also something that's really, um, exciting me about this project because it is a scrap work project or a patchwork project using different colors of yarn. So if you are interested in participating in that, there is still time. I will provide the link down below that you can go to Jimmy Beans Wool and um, sign up and, you know, get your January shipment to you and get started. I don't know how far into the year they actually ship out. Like, I don't know when they actually close. That's a good question for me to ask them. Like, when do they, when do you close the subscription? Like, when is it, is it, when is it? You know what I mean? When's it too late to sign up? But if you haven't already and you think that looks like something you would enjoy, you can use the link below and um, sign up for that. So that is my long standing whip. That will be an all year long whip. And I will be talking about that every, probably every month at some point when I do my podcast episodes, just to show you my progress. Okay. So, um, let's talk about my knitting plans because I have three. I have three knitting plans. I'm positive. Well, I can't be completely positive, but I'm certainly planning on the first two things, doing those for sure, like soon, starting them soon. As soon as I finish up, let me just, let's just start. Okay. I am going to knit another Vertices Unite shawl by Stephen West. I love that shawl. I knit one several years ago. Let me show it to you. This is my version. I can't even see what I'm showing you. <laughs> I have, I have shown this on the podcast before, but it's been a long time. So I wanted to show it again. Um, just, okay. I used, I think I, I think that this section is the only one I used a full skein of yarn for. And this was a little line heads knit color. I don't remember the colorway name. And then I used a pretty large portion of a hundred gram fingering weight skein for this uh, minty green color, although I still had a little bit left. And then these striped sections were scrappy, just some scrap yarn. This was some scrap yarn as was this, and as was the I cord edging that you put on at the end. So I love this shawl so much. I love the colors that I chose. I wasn't, yeah, I just, it's so, it's so pretty. And I actually wore this quite often, but my daughter started a new job about a month ago and she has to leave the house at 5.30 in the morning because her shift starts at six. We have been having, our winter has, December was disgusting and gray and rainy and just like, blah, it wasn't cold. It wasn't warm. It was that weird, you know, but then January came and it got super cold. We got lots of snow, which I love. Although today it's raining again and it's supposed to be in the high forties. So <laughs> bye bye, um, winter weather. But anyway, she was leaving for work one of the first days that she started and it's, it's like been single digits Fahrenheit here, like four degrees Fahrenheit in the mornings that early. And so she's like, I need, I'm so cold. I need something to keep me warm. I'm like, hold on, I'll get you a shawl. I've been trying to get her to wear my shawls for a while. So I ran into my bedroom and I looked through my drawer of shawls and I was like, oh, this one is perfect for her. So I, I'm like, would, would you like to wear this one? 
And so she took it and she came home from work and she's like, I love this thing. And she has literally worn this when she's gone out every single time. In fact, I went into her bedroom to get it so I could show it for this podcast and she, and, and this thing, cause I had already given it to her and she's like, are you going to give it back to me before I leave today? Cause she has to, she's going somewhere after lunch. And I'm like, yes, Lil, I just need it to show on my podcast. So I, this is such a shawl. This was a fun shawl to knit because it's knit in what's that called when you knit it in oh it's like knit in sections oh my gosh it's right on the tip of my tongue you guys are probably yelling it at me oh it's right there can't think of it okay moving on um modular I think that's what it is modular so modular knitting and you knit a section then you like kind of pick up and you knit the next section and I remember him making it super easy and it's been like three years since I've knitted this so I can't remember but I just remember think because a lot of times I'm not crazy about picking up stitches but it was super easy so it must have been the way he had you finish the edge that made it really easy to pick up stitches but regardless it was super fun to knit and it kept my attention because I was changing colors and it's just so, it's a fun scarf to wear. So I'm going to knit another one because this is now Lily's. Lily has claimed this and that is perfectly all right with me. I want my family, I, it like fills me with joy to know that she wants to, in, to wear something that I made. Um, so that is gonna be hers and I'm gonna knit myself another one and I'm going to use this yarn that I showed you just a little bit ago as one of my main colors. This is that yarn from Col Cozy Color Works. So I'm gonna use it probably for like where this, I have to figure that out yet. I have to figure that out because I, I need, I wanna, like I wanna plan out my colors a little bit. But then I have all this other fingering weight yarn plus all my scraps. So this is, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward. As I said, I've been in the mood to knit shawls. Um, I'm in a shawl mood lately. So I'm really looking forward to this. i um, going to start that very soon. Why did I, I think I just wanted to get a little bit further. I wanted to seam up my Glome cardigan and get the stitches picked up for the arms and get that moving. So I have some forward progress with that. And then I'm going to cast on another Vertices Unite by Stephen West. Okay. The next thing I have is another priority for me because I have the yarn and I've had the yarn since last year. I was inspired by Stephanie of Edible Thoughts Makes. She is on Instagram with that name, Edible Thoughts Makes, as well as she has a YouTube channel and I watch her videos every time she uploads them. She's a very prolific knitter and I find her very inspiring and she does a lot of color combinations that I wouldn't necessarily think of, but I really like them. And this, what I'm about to show you, is completely inspired by Stephanie. Um, so I had been, I had saved the Sonder pattern by Petite Knitter in my Ravelry favorites a while back. And um, I was just like, I really want to knit that someday, but I'm not sure when or what yarn I will use. And then Stephanie, at some point, I think last fall, did an episode, podcast episode and she was wearing this gorgeous sweater. And I was like, that looks like the Sonder sweater. And then she started talking about it and it was the Sonder sweater. And I loved her color combination. So I bought it. <laughs> I bought this, I bought the yarn to make the same sweater as her. Uh, I messaged, I commented on her thing and said, you've totally inspired me. I am buying those colors and I am making that exact, I'm making it just like you. So, oh, this is going to be so fun. I guys, I crave color in the winter. I, I just want color in the, in the winter. I find myself in the summer knitting with more neutrals in the winter. I'm just like, it's so brown here. I'm just like, I just need color. So this is so colorful. So this this yarn is Pearl Soho Good Wool. It's 100% Andean Highland Wool. And I got this on, they often do 20, 25% off sales on their website. And I got this during that time. So I think that each skein was like, I don't know if it's regularly 13 something or if I got it on sale for 13 something. It's just really affordable. Um, there is, how many yards are in this? 383 yards. So it's a, would it be considered a weight or a DK weight? DK weight. It's a DK weight. 
So this reddish orangey color is barn door and this light pink is pink salt. And so this is going to be my contrast color for the yoke. And this is going to be my main color of the body of my sweater. I'm so excited to get started. I've never knit one of um, petite knitters patterns before, but I've, I've looked at them. I have multiple patterns of her saved into my Ravelry. I don't even think I've purchased Sonder yet. Um, I just like, you know, I don't, unless I'm planning on casting something on right away, or if it's on a really good s a pattern sale, I don't typically buy a pattern right away. I usually put it in my, you guys probably do the same. You put it in your Ravelry favorites or whatever, and you kind of think about it, but, um, I am going to purchase that and I'm going to get started on this probably once I finish the gloam. I don't want to have two sweaters going at one time. I feel like that would be overwhelming to me. And then just clutter my brain and I don't like clutter. So that is happening. And then another thing that I want to make happen, but realistically it probably won't happen this winter. I don't know. I want to make the advent wrap by, is it called a wrap? Yeah. Advent wrap by Hyrus makes. This is um, a pattern that I featured in my very first scrappy episode back in 2022 when I did that 50 scrappy, um, projects for Advent. And this was one of the patterns. And when I had done that, I had actually thought about casting on that project and then I never did. And then I thought about it again this year. And then I didn't cause I did the euphorbia and, but anyway, I was watching Yana from finished knitting stories. I think it was just, well, she, okay. So she's knitting it. She's knitting the Advent wrap by Harris makes. And she's using her advent kit from the homespun house that she had gotten in December. She used it to make hers and she just showed it completed on her most recent episode and she was wearing it. I loved it. And it reminded me how much I wanted to knit this and it's looks, you literally just knit panels and then you stitch them together. So it was kind of similar to what I did with the gloam cardigan, only you don't knit on sleeves. It's just panels stitched together. It's like oversized. It's an oversized wrap. It goes on over, like over your shoulders, but it's, I think I'm pretty sure it's stitched at the sides. Anyway, I would love, I'll put a picture up here if I haven't already, but I would love to knit that because I do have a lot of scrappy things. I, I don't want to do a bright one like huh, Yana did. Um, I would rather do like pastel colors, um, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Again, I think I'm, I'm craving that because it's a lot of colors and I want some color right now. Okay. Last thing I want to talk about that's yarn related. Oh my goodness. I think this is going to be a really long podcast episode. <laughs> I wanted to talk about a yarn subscription club that, um, I've talked about in the past. It's been probably two years. So I used to have a subscription to row one yarn. Have you guys heard of them? Um, I know some of you have, because when I've talked about them in the past, you've reached out and said that you've also, you know, received them, but it is, um, a yarn subscription club and the owner and founder of that business, that club, her name's Laura. She reached out to me. She emailed me and said that she was a podcast viewer, which was so funny. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you watch my, it's just funny when like people that you follow and I feel like have bigger have pretty big following followings when they say something like they watch your podcast. It's just weird. Anyway, she reached out and asked if she could send me one of her, one of her kits, one of her color kits. And I was like, oh, yes, that'd be so much fun. And I told her that I had subscribed in the past. I did like a, I did a subscription for like six months and then I was getting overwhelmed with minis cause I wasn't using them. So I had canceled it, but she sent me one of, so the club is called carnival of color carnival of color club and you pay monthly you get a new kit sent to you the kit contains 100 grams of yarn which is divided up into 10 10 gram minis and all of those minis are by the same indie dyer and every month she features a new indie dyer and you also can subscribe to get two kits a month and if you do that you will get kits from two different indie dyers. So you're not getting two of the same kits. So that is really nice too. Um, and then she always puts other goodies in there. This, it comes in this little pouch row one. 
And then this is going to crinkle. And then you get a little goodie bag with, I'll show you. Usually there's like a piece of candy and a stitch marker or something like that. But let's, let's look. Oops. Oops. Okay. So we've got, we've got a progress keeper and a stitch marker. Little thing of yarn. That's cute. And then I got a chocolate bar. And then you also get, oh, what's this? Oh, a sticker. Get a brand sticker. And then she includes the story behind the yarn. This month that she sent me is Nitty Gritty Fiber Arts. And so this yarn is on the Champagne Powder Select base. And so it's a 75% merino, superwash merino, and 25% recycled nylon fingering weight. And there's 437 yards in this total, and that equals 100 grams. And the maker behind this is Daniel Mize. And, oh, this is interesting. So Daniel donates a hand-knit baby hat to NICUs across the country for every five skeins of yarn sold. Oh, that's nice. And Daniel is from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so then you get 10 different colorways from that month's dyer. Isn't that fun? If you like scrappy projects, that is like, that is so much fun. And I had a lot of fun when I was subscribed. It's just that I got, I, and I'm still working through, I'll tell you what, these came in handy though, when I was doing all of my scrappy projects this year, because I had so many, I had, well, I would have had 60 of these things. Cause I think I had a subscription for six months. Yeah. So, um, but that was so incredibly nice of Laura to reach out and send me that. And if you, I have a coupon code for you, which I will link down below as well as put here on the screen if I remember, but if not, it will be down below for sure. If you want to, and I think this is how I got started in it. I used a coupon code somebody had talked about. She, you can get 20% off your first month's subscription by using the code hello20. So anyway, um, thank you, Laura, for sending that beautiful little gift of happiness to me. Again, it came at such a good time because I hadn't been feeling well and it was just so fun to get that package of color in the mail and I will be putting it to good use with all my scrappy projects that I've been working on. <laughs> so, uh, and if you guys are interested in the Carnival of Color Club, you can go ahead and uh, use that code to get 20% off your first month. So that is all the knitting content. I'm pretty much going to wrap this up, but I did want to do a little life update. Uh, yeah, so I was sick, guys, from November 30th until just re sometime in January. I still have a little bit of residual, like, sinus stuff and post-nasal drip that's mostly in the morning. Whatever virus I had was just a complete bugger. Like, I was, I'm just so over it, you know? I was just... <laughs> I mean, I was throwing all the things at it, all the things, all the things. Anytime somebody would offer me advice, I'm like, yeah, I've been there. I've done that. It's not working. It takes, it just took time. It took time. And that's what I've noticed with my sinuses. I have problematic sinus cavities. They take weeks to settle inflammation down. I don't know what it is about that part of my body, but that's how it is. So I just had to give it time and eventually I was able to walk around and not feel dizzy and like my heart was throbbing in my face, which, oh, it's so nice to not feel that anymore. Um, another thing, I've just been a little bit absent on social media and such because I've been having some other health issues and I don't want to stay like stuck here for a long time because I've talked to you guys before about, you know, my struggles with anxiety and, and in particular health anxiety. And so I'm having some things going on right now. I've had mitral valve prolapse since high school. I was diagnosed with it in high school and, um, the symptoms of it have gotten worse. The heart palpitations, the murmur, I was chalking it up to like the perimenopausal stuff I'm going through, but it was just getting, it was just getting like it was making me more anxious because I was having the symptoms so much more often. So I went back to a different cardiologist. The last one I saw was in 2020. He did some tests and said he couldn't really find anything significant. And I honestly did not like the guy at all. He was, whoo, I think he was arrogant. He had horrible bedside manners. He scared me half to death. Like he just, I, I, so I, when I called the office, back at the beginning of January, I said, uh, yeah, I don't 
want him. I need somebody else. And I knew who I wanted to go to. It was somebody a family member goes to. So I have been seeing him this month. I've had three different tests done. I'm currently wearing this cardiac monitor to monitor, like, to see how many ectopic beats I'm getting and what exactly they are. And um, that's for 30 days. So I'm halfway through that. I had an echo done. I had a cardiac MRI done yesterday. Got the results back of that. Found some stuff out that I'm not going to talk about because I don't really know the extent of things yet. But I've just been dealing with a lot mentally with that, with this all. So it's, and sometimes when I, I just get overwhelmed with that, when it has stuff to do with health, I take care of my body. I'll, like I exercise, I eat organic, I eat whole foods. I, I'm hardly ever eating any processed sugars or processed foods, you know? And so it just sometimes feels really frustrating but what this particular thing is that showed up on my cardiac MRI is not anything that I can control. It's completely out of my control. Uh, it's a structural thing. It's not from lifestyle choices. So I'm just in this place of processing that. And I haven't talked to the doctor yet to get the specifics on it. I'm just going from what I read on my report, which I know can be dangerous. But some of you probably know, I before I quit working to homeschool my kids, I was a registered nurse. Um, so I have lots of not medical knowledge. So I felt confident in my ability to look at my report, but then I also know that I need to not jump to too many conclusions before I talk to my doctor. So anyway, for those of you who pray, if you can be praying for me, cause that is some, an area that I'm honestly struggling a bit with, but I'm just trusting God. Um, you know, because that is what I need to do. I need to trust God in, in all things really. Um, and especially in something that I just struggle with a lot, like with health anxiety. So that's where I am with that. Um, plus it's just, you know, winter and uh, it's just not my favorite time of year, but we all have areas and things that we struggle with. And that's just happens to be mine, but God is faithful. He's always been faithful. We've been through various things in our marriage and life, um, that have been trials and challenges and, you know, he's always been faithful through them. So that's just what I keep reminding myself. So that explains my absence. I just felt overwhelmed by a lot of things and just couldn't pull it together enough to film a podcast. Uh, I think I, I'm thinking about taking a break from Instagram and I hardly ever get on Facebook, but uh, I just, I feel like I need to hear less of the world and more of God right now. So that is, I'm thinking I'm doing like a, a social media fast, not from YouTube. I actually, when I get on YouTube, I watch videos that are very, like I purposely choose what I watch on Instagram. When I scroll, I sometimes see way too more, way too much information. Um, I, I just, I feel like I control the YouTube thing. A little bit more and plus I want to continue to be able to film my podcast and post them so that's what's going on it's God is good God is faithful he loves me he loves my family he loves all he loves his his children you know so I I am more prone to worry or to be anxious because I do struggle with that naturally so I just want to I want to block out a lot of noise, extra noise, and just focus on scripture and his truth and what he has to speak to me during this time so Phil, I'm just telling you guys that because, you know, I want to be honest with everyone and that's a big part of my life. My, um, my relationship with Jesus Christ and God, it's a big part of my life and some people may not like that and that's okay because that is what I, that is what I'm choosing. I'm, ch you know, so, um, anyway, I think that's pretty much sums it up. Oh, wait, real quick. Let me show you my thousand hours outside. Is anybody else doing this with me? I've talked about this before. I talked about it in my vlog, miss. Uh, look, January, it's January, but I still have, what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours already clocked outside. Um, that doesn't include like when I'm going to and from my car or stores or anything. This is like actually going outside that is something I do for my mental health. I try to get outside every day. Rain is my least favorite weather to go out in, and it's supposed to rain all week, so this might be a struggle this week, but I loved going out in the snow all last week and we in this past weekend, um, but yeah, just really good for me, so this is how I motivate myself. A thousand hours outside. I'll link the website down below. You can get on there and print out your own little printable, and basically you just color in each section. One section represents one hour, and they have all different kinds of like 
coloring pages that you can pick from. I just chose this one this year. Anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that because I'm having a lot of fun with that as well. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys mean a lot to me. Thank you for reaching out. And uh, I never mean to leave anybody hanging. It's just that, you know, real life trumps my online life. <laughs> and so I just had some things to take care of. And sometimes I just need a little quiet. So that is why I've been a little bit absent, but it feels really good to be back on here in this space and filming an episode. And so thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.